When did you realize, I have to stop hanging out with this kid? He hated gays and was a hardcore Christian conservative. I didn't care for it and cut things off. Oh yeah, there was also that one guy in this one group of friends I had who would try to get with every girl who happened to be in the group. I noped out of there the moment he and the girl I was going on a date with in a few hours started getting a little too comfortable together. He was disrespectful and hostile to teachers and authority figures in the school, and openly, loudly, and in public hated women. I met him through mutual friends and felt bad for him because he had a lot of problems at home, so I hung out with him occasionally. And I won't lie, it could be pretty fun to chill with him when he wasn't going on a tirade about how awful women are. Final Straw was a two-day period wherein he loudly mocked a librarian like a five-year-old because the guy had told him to leave the school library if he wasn't going to do homework. I was doing my calculus homework while he talked at me. The next day, he got into a shouting match with some girl in the hallway. She got so fed up with him that she smeared his white shirt with her makeup, and he spent the rest of the day loudly telling me that women were terrible and that he now smelled like a fat-ass bitch. I had quite a good reputation among teachers and other students in high school, even though I wasn't popular by any means, and I really didn't want to be associated with someone who behaved like that. So I stopped talking to him aside from brief hellos as we passed in the hall. Her idea of fun was using my computer to arrange dates with older men on the internet and drag me along with her. I was sitting on the bed in some basement while she was draping herself over two strange guys, we were 15, and I realized, these guys could murder us right now and no one would ever know. Noped the fuck out of there and never spoke to her again. After he took about nine grams of mushrooms in one night. Afterwards, he became very weird. Would mumble to himself, pick fights, and start spouting conspiracy theory shit. The I'm done moment came when some friends and I were talking in the hallway at school and he walks up and says, bestiality is gross. Why would anyone fuck a dog? Completely unprovoked and he just walked off without waiting for a response. When she said, I did an experiment, I asked what she did. Well, I got my dad's hammer and whacked the small jewels on my bracelet. They didn't break, so they are diamonds. I proceeded to start arguing with her that those are fake and are just painted rocks, while she kept saying that they were really small diamonds. I said that bracelets that only cost $2 wouldn't have diamonds in them. She said they might have accidentally ended up in the factory. I told her that they wouldn't make a mistake like that, and she kept saying it was an accident. Did I stop hanging out with her? No. When I was growing up, a neighbor of mine spent a whole summer trying to learn pyrokinesis in the woods. He printed out a manual and just sat in the woods all day staring at a lit candle trying to make it move. That was when he went from weird idiot to crazy man. Oh Jesus, that would be Angus. If there ever was a kid that scared people, it was Angus. You just took one look at the guy and thought, prison. He was immense fun for other kids to be around. He was not as dumb in the normal sense of the word. In fact, he was quite bright in an inventive and fucked up kind of way. He just did not understand the negative impacts of his daily pranks and adventures. He was the kid that persuaded the city kid to piss on an electric fence, age seven. He was the first kid in school to make Molotov cocktails, age nine, steal a car, age 11, crash a car, same day. This was the kid who would buy a pint of maggots just to post through people's letterboxes. He was an utter cunt, but he had a mad vivaciousness about him. A compelling wild magnetism to his personality that drew in other kids to his special level of insanity. I regret to say that I was one of his lieutenants in crime, his yes man to all escapades. Even when he went beyond the silly pranks into downright deadly stuff, I stood beside him laughing and cheering him on. One of his occasional targets was Louise, an elderly woman who lived on her own who would retaliate to his pranks with stunts of her own, putting a bike lock of her own on his bike, pouring used cooking oil along the wall that we used to sit on. And then he was 14, he killed her cat. It broke her. It also broke the spell he had us all under. Overnight, he went from the lovable rogue to that fucking psycho, and all of us just deserted him. No one wanted to be associated with that degree of evil, and he quickly became a pariah. Nobody wanted to be seen near him, let alone talk to him. He carried on with his stunts for a while, but without his crowd of lackeys and cronies, it became more pathetic and sad to see. He hanged himself on his 16th birthday. Less than a dozen people attended his funeral. I had a goldfish. I loved this goldfish. His name was Frederick, and I had him for about a year until Jackson came over. Keep in mind, we're both 10. 
I went to the bathroom and Jackson took Frederick out of the bowl and stomped on him outside. I was devastated and my mom took Jackson home. Never hung out with Jackson again. He did move schools a year later and I have no idea what he's doing now. My friend Reggie was a great friend throughout high school, but then something changed. He started dating this girl who was really rich and he wasn't. So he started lying to her about where he lived and how much money he had. It was then a snowball effect where he started lying about everything. He screwed over a friend over a fake ID, long story, stopped paying his rent and leaving his roommate and best friend to cover him, owing him about three grand, and I even caught him cheating at poker. Eventually one day he used me as his guest pass for a gym. He told me to leave my phone in a locker with his wallet, which he said didn't need to be locked because nobody comes here. As we were working out, these three kids walked in. Reggie said, see those kids? Know who they are? They were the bad kids in our high school after we left. Those guys are bad news. I shrugged it off. Who cares? Reggie says he has to talk to the girl at the front desk and comes back 10 minutes later. We go to the locker room to get our stuff and Reggie pulls out an acting job worthy of Polly Shore when he yells, oh no, somebody stole your phone. I'm like, okay. My phone is about three years old with a semi-cracked screen. Who the fuck would do that? And they also stole the rent check in my wallet I was going to give to Alan. Do you think it was those bad kids we saw earlier? And there it was. In Reggie's dumb Ocean's Eleven style plan, he was going to tell Alan he can't pay the rent this week because the check was stolen. And if he doesn't believe him, well, Jimmy had his phone stolen too. The kids who walked in were probably a bonus he could use to build his shitty story. I don't know if I was more angry at my phone being gone or the insult to my intelligence that I would fall for this dumb shit. In the car afterwards, Reggie said, wouldn't you just love to punch the kid who took your phone? Fucking assholes. And I replied, I don't think I'd have to go too far, Reggie. I think it was you. I really can't afford to buy another phone right now. Can you please give it back to me and I'll just stay quiet about this? He said it wasn't me, but barely put any effort into it. It was like we both knew at that moment that I wasn't going to deal with this shit anymore, and after the incident, we never spoke again. Three friends from high school used to invite me to go hunting with them, using bows and arrows, in the woods not far from where I grew up. One kid was odd. He'd sometimes stop and shoot an arrow straight up above our heads so that it could land most anywhere. But then, it got worse. He'd aim the arrow directly at one of us and say, Relax, I'm just kidding. He'd keep doing it now and again even though we told him emphatically not to. I decided then and there that I'd never hang out with that kid again. That was it. I was hanging out with this kid in my neighborhood and we were shooting a BB rifle at some empty cans in his backyard. We were about 10 years old or so at the time. I can't imagine letting my kid shoot anything higher powered than a Nerf gun while unsupervised, but there we were. What can I say? It was the 80s. I remember saying how it was almost too easy because we always hit the targets, and it wasn't a challenge at all because the cans were sitting still. I was about to suggest rigging up some kind of system involving hanging the cans on some long string and pulling it to make things more exciting, but I didn't get that far into my explanation. Before I could finish my thought, his eyes lit up and he said that moving targets definitely sound like more fun. So points the BB rifle at me and says, run! I start freaking out telling him this isn't funny and you're not supposed to point a gun at anyone, all the while realizing that if he really decided to pull the trigger, there's no way I could dodge or get out of the way fast enough to avoid getting hit. Again, he just repeats, run. Well, there's obviously no use in trying to reason with this kid. He's going to shoot at me either way. So I'd better try and get out of the line of fire. I bolt to the nearest spot that offers any semblance of cover, but he got me in the arm. I'd backed up about 20 feet or so, so it wasn't entirely a point blank shot. Thankfully, the BB didn't break the skin or embed itself in my arm, but it sure stung like hell. And that's when I realized, I have to stop hanging out with this kid. Never called him over or anything after that point. Because we lived in the same neighborhood, we went to the same schools up until the end of high school. He seemed to be in with the crowd that was up to no good. Not the kids that wore the Marilyn Manson shirts just to freak out their parents, but the ones that were clearly only in school because they haven't been incarcerated yet. A guy in my old frat became one of those guys who owns 30 guns and is planning on how to live in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. I thought he was joking when he started telling me his plans. I laughed in his face, and he told me that when shit hits the fan, I'm coming for your food supply. I was speechless. I don't have a food supply. 
I'm a normal person. We were six. His mom told us to stop watching TV and go outside and play. He argued and threw a fit. After she walked away, he turned the TV on and was badmouthing her. His plan was to lie and to say we were doing something else. There were three problems that my six-year-old self had. This was a dumb plan, it was a dumb show and a nice day, and he was being a tool to his mom. It seemed like a big deal at the time. When he started bitching to everyone how pathetic his life is and whatnot, I decided to help him out. Got him a job, he never worked at his life, and he calls out on the first day and never shows up again. Got him a girl, he is a virgin at 23, and he didn't follow up with her. Then proceeded to blame me on his life fuck ups and lack of initiative. At that point, I made the decision. 